I'm just gonna get all my smoke so I can help the team as much as possible. Later. With pulling them in. I suck the killjoy. <laughs> I'm just gonna get all my smoke so I can help the team as much as possible. So that was a lie. Understanding how to navigate the murky waters of solo queue can be daunting. Believe me, I do a lot of it. In this video, we'll break down one of my recent ranked matches and go over my thought process throughout the game. Hopefully, this gives you a better understanding of how an Astra player thinks in the prestigious rank of Platinum. If you guys enjoy the video, likes are always appreciated. That aside, I'm chill and let's get into it. Round one is probably one of the more interesting pistol rounds I've experienced. We have decent defensive positions with me and Raze on A and Breach, Killjoy, and Jet. Well, Jet needs some time to think about what gun they want to use, I guess. I start the round by preemptively placing a smoke and gravity well combo at A short. It's common for attackers to push through a choke together on pistol, and the Raze and I are in good position to delay the push. The attackers make noise and show presence in short and shower, so I decide to smoke both. The breach spots multiple enemies by B, and the attackers seem to have retreated after we put pressure on them at A. I spot three enemies on the minimap, and the Sage pushes through Octagon into sight, so to me this seems like a guaranteed B hit, especially since the Phoenix walls up the side. Well, that's not what happened. Their Sage sneaks all the way through Elbow, eventually taking out my Killjoy. Lucky for me, she doesn't notice I'm also on sight, so I easily dispose of her with a classic right click. So now it's time to head back to A. The round ends anticlimactically, but hey look, our Jet finally picked a gun. Nice job, Jet. Round 2 goes about as well as you'd expect, so let's just move on to round 3. At the start of round 3, our Raze gets a bit too saucy and decides to TP into the 4 attackers at B short. Although she gets a pick, both her and my Jet decide to leave me to watch A alone. I make sure to anchor the site since the enemy has shown that they like to lurk most rounds and rotate very quickly. Even though I don't think anyone lurked up on me, there were a couple moments where an enemy could have snuck by. Luckily I catch the Reyna lurking through U-Haul and now I know it's safe to rotate. Shortly after, Killjoy decides to ignore the fact that she has an alarm bot below Hookah and pushes up anyway giving the attackers a numbers advantage. I decide to smoke and gravity well when I see the attackers on the minimap near the jump down. My gravity well assists the jet netting us two picks, but there was a small gap in my smoke that the Sova used to take out the jet. Luckily, after a scary 1v1 on site, I win the round. Although we won the round, this is a perfect example of how the round could have been lost due to bad smoke placement. Were my teammates more at fault due to their bad decisions earlier in the round? Yeah, probably. But you can't control what your teammates do, you can only control what you do. Focus on your mistakes rather than your teammates. That is how you improve. I'm feeling a little more confident heading into round 4, so I move into showers and hold an off angle to try and catch the attackers off guard. I take a page out of Ye's book and ADS. Now I normally don't ADS, but I wanted to react as quickly as possible and crutched on it a little bit. The Reina thought it was hilarious though, but I guess when I killed her a second time, it was a little less funny. While this was happening, the spike gets planted and I decide to smoke U-Haul in short since I need to get onto site and defuse. After a shaky duel with Sova back site, I decide to go for the Cosmic Divide blocking all choke points the enemies could be playing. I tap spike, hold the angle I spot Phoenix before the wall went up, and get the ace. I knew the rim had to be somewhere near short or U-Haul, but I have no idea where he will peek and just miss the timing. Unlucky. First things first, if you're ever down in rounds, think about purchasing a good luck phantom. It totally was on purpose and not an accident at all. Oh shit, I bought another gun by accident. It's fine. No one has to know that. In the beginning of the round, I use my mini map a lot here to put smoke stars down where I see enemies. This is very helpful, especially if your team isn't calming. Use that mini map. It seems the pressure is towards B, but my teammates deal with the threats. Raze gets a good pick and showers, which happen to be the spike holder. It may seem obvious to some, but defending the spike with your team is now your new objective. There are instances where the spike drops and you can't watch it, but in this scenario, it's best to play up in showers with the Raze. I know it's possible there's a lurker somewhere, so I don't immediately start running. As I head the showers, BAM! Rain is here. Ray spots Phoenix showers, so I immediately run over to help them and trade if necessary. Always better to fight together in these situations, especially since there's one enemy left and you know their location. Welcome to the new segment called Chat and Chill. The time during my ranked matches where chat asks questions and I attempt to answer them while focusing on the game at the same time. This chatter had a question about Omen. I play Omen a lot, but I barely use his TPs. I just never feel comfortable enough taking that risk. Yeah, I would only use like risky teleports, like basically like forward moving teleports on on attack or if you're on defense like you're crossing into that like danger zone i would really only do that like a handful of times because you'll get too predictable 
and like if you know you have a blind on someone then you can go for like you know maybe like a a flash teleport behind them or teleport above them you know something like crazy like that i wouldn't make that the norm you know and there you have it never abuse the blind teleport mechanic because it will become predictable to the enemy you are not him moving on Round 9 begins with a lot of noise outside A. My shower's teammate gets taken out so I immediately smoke both showers and short. I did smoke short a little too fast and you'll notice another gap that someone could have exploited, but I was lucky this time. I try to pull the brim out with a gravity well, but he stays in position. Now that they know where I am, I want to change position, so I recall my star short to help me cross back towards truck. I probably should have died here, but got lucky again. I reposition while not making noise in U-Haul, but at this point, it seems like the attackers rotated. We spot 1B and head over. My raise gets a little impatient and peeks the Reyna towards elbow. Luckily, I hit a nice headshot on her and catch the Sage hopping up on tube. My gravity well doesn't catch the Brim, so I sneak onto sight from the left. I spot Brim elbow and know he's probably going to go for his ult, plus the spike is close to the point of no return, so I put my wall up and just went for it. He probably heard it or maybe just ulted to delay regardless of the wall, and I wait a second too long to get off, which cost me. Almost a nice clutch, but the odds were definitely against me here. Alright, round 11 has a lot to break down. It starts with two enemies revealed near B short by our Rays, who decided to go for the hero rocket play and unfortunately, but expectedly, gets taken out trying to take a fight they had no business taking. The Killjoy also spots a third, so I know the attackers are leaning towards B. At the same time, my jet gets caught out in A short, but in this situation it's probably better to rotate and help my team on B. I just need to keep in mind there's a chance the Reyna flanks through our spawn. I notice the Killjoy turret spots an enemy on the mid minimap, so I decide to activate the smoke immediately and help out my Breach and Killjoy. Here's where I commit one of the mortal sins of Valorant, using an ability on my own teammate. I'm sure you've done it too. I see that the Phoenix jumped out of Hookah right onto my Gravwell, so I instinctively activate it hoping to help Killjoy, but instead my Killjoy decides to run directly at the Phoenix. Luckily, the Phoenix whiffs and returns back to his ult spot. Now, the Killjoy was ultimately unaffected by my gravity well, but this is where I could have communicated better to my teammate. I can hear an attacker hop out of Hookah, but luckily my Breach ults sight. Sadly, here comes mistake number three. I walk directly into my Breach's ult, preventing me from taking out the Brim. Fortunately for me, it didn't matter since Breach finished the job. Now we have Spike and two remain in Hookah. I recall one star to use as a smoke eventually and try to communicate with the Breach what I see in Hookah. The attacker's plan I get a shaky pick on the Reyna, hit a juicy flick on the Sage, and my teammate finishes the Phoenix. A few mistakes here that could have cost us the round had we played a more competent team. Alright, let's move on to the second half. A few uneventful rounds go by due to AFKs and disconnects. On round 18, we actually had a decent default position across the map. We didn't even discuss this, it kind of just happened. Our jet decides to do jet things and quickly move up A short and dashes into U-Haul. Risky play, but sure, go for it. I tried to quickly react and put down smokes on site to help my jet and breach. I tell Killjoy to TP since it looks like we're going to take A pretty convincingly. You can TP, you can TP. TP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, this is where our plan quickly falls apart. The Reyna was spotted on the minimap and soon after, the Sage was spotted back site. Raze pushes into U-Haul and I decide to stick with them until my team comes out of showers. I spot the Phoenix in the corner a bit too late and we quickly get taken out one by one. This round showed a lack of utility by the Breach who potentially could have stunned the site diagonally or even used a flash to help them get onto site. You normally don't want to smoke this position if we're splitting the site, so smokes on truck or between truck and triple are preferred. I definitely could have planned my smokes a bit better here. Another valuable lesson to take away from this round is to never trust your teammates. Now I'm not saying my rays should have warned me since they probably didn't realize where they were being shot from until it was too late, but in general if you're unsure that a teammate cleared a corner, make sure to double check and clear even if it seems obvious. Round 19 actually went about as smooth as you can hope for. We used utility well, jet hit a couple nice shots, and we planted without stress. Why can't all my rounds be like this, am I right? Round 20 was a little bumpy, but luckily we got a pick through smoke and hookah while two defenders teleported. This means A is most likely completely clear. We recognize that and immediately rotate in our Killjoy TPs to A. Jet goes for a hero play as they do every round and it actually works out. 
Finally, we make it to round 21. I have ult this round, so we decide to fast take A since it's better suited for my ult than B. Killjoy dies, but since Breach's ult comes in, the Reyna dismisses and their only option is to teleport. As I plant, I see that our Raze gets shotgunned by Phoenix waiting in a corner. I know he'll probably re-peek me since the last thing he saw was me planting. I sneak up to a slightly different angle and get the pick. I go for a plant again, which is definitely risky, but I'm able to hear Sage's footsteps behind my ult at the last second, so I get off plant as soon as she peeks. I like to call this move the holy shit please just let me plant the spike play. Bit of a mouthful but I'm still workshopping it. I move into safety and put a grav well on the spike just in case my teammates lose their fights plus I can watch flank from this position. It's a good thing I do because that's exactly where the brim was coming from. GG. Attackers win. Overall, this was a decent example of what a platinum game might look like. Not a lot of coordination, some good things, and a lot of mistakes. But ultimately, it comes down to who makes the least amount of mistakes in ranked. Astra is a more difficult agent to master, and that's exactly why I like her. If played well, she can be a problematic agent to deal with, and has excellent utility for team play. As much as I play Astra, I still need to work on things like smoke placement and timing when I should activate my abilities. But that's going to be it for this one. Remember to drop a like if you enjoyed your stay, comment below what you like to see from me next and subscribe for more guides like this one. If you're interested in learning more about how ranked works, check out this video next. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.